So welcome back aliens, this is Narvin Reddy from Talisco Learnings and in this video we'll talk about Spring MVC with annotations. So in fact we, uh, in the earlier video we have already talked about how to create a Spring MVC application using, a, using XML. Uh, so maybe uh, you are new to this video, you have not seen my earlier videos or if you have seen that that's good. So let's say if you have not seen those videos it's okay let me, re let me do a quick recap what we have done. So we have created a Spring application, specifically Spring MVC application, in which we have tried to achieve this. Let me run this code to see what's happening here. So if I run this code, so we have, it is asking for two numbers. Again, it's not, we are not specifying anything here, but it is asking for two numbers. If I say four and eight, if I click on the submit query, uh, it is adding those two values and the, we are getting the output as 12, right? So this is uh, this is how this is what we have, we want to achieve. We want to add two numbers and we'll get the output. So we can do it with the help of simple servlet. We can use turds, but we choose to work with Spring MVC here. So what we have done is uh, this uh, this JSP page in which we are asking for two numbers. When you click on this button submit, it will call this. It will send a add request by sending these two values. So you can see in the address bar we are sending a add request here. And then we are sending these two values. So as soon as you send a request, the request will go to your web.xml file, right? So that's the main file. So that's your deployment descriptor. So if you have, if you have the, uh, cons if you have the idea about how servlet works, so when you send a request, the request goes to your web.xml file, in which you map the request. So for all the request, which means when you say slash, it means for all the request, the request should go to dispatch a servlet. Which means you don't want your normal web XML to handle your request. You want Spring Framework to handle all the requests. As soon as you forward the request to Dispatch Servlet, it will try to access this file, which is Telisco hyphen Servlet XML. Now, why this file name should be like this? The file name should be something hyphen Servlet XML. So, since we are writing Servlet name as Telisco, it should be Telisco hyphen Servlet XML. If it is ABC. It could be abc-servlet.xml. In this, what we are doing is we are we are we are saying that all the uh, all the requests will be mapped with the help of components. Okay, so it it, it will be on an annotation configuration. So you will get all your controllers in the in this package, which is uh, com.telisco. Right. So let's go back to our, uh, our class, which is add controller. So in this package, which is com.telisco, we have a controller. Right. Uh, in which you have a method which is trying to map a request. So let's say when you send an add request, it will get mapped here. Well, let's say when you're sending a different request, let's say that's a subtraction request. For that, you need to create another method. We'll name that method as sub and we'll pass the same parameters request response so that we can fetch the values. And then we can actually set the, uh, we can do the processing there and we can return the value. Now, since we are sending an add request, this thing will work here, right? So what we want to achieve now is we want to make this as a annotation based configuration. So you will say, okay, it is already configured with annotations, right? Since we are using annotations here, so we have an annotation here, we have an annotation here, but somewhere we are using XML, right? So this file, which is the uh, Spring MVC configuration file. So this is basically a dispatcher servlet configuration file in which you have to mention uh, the controller names. But since we are working with annotations, so we are not mentioning anything here. Then why to even use this XML file? Can we replace this? Uh, okay, that's one. So we need to replace this XML file. Second, this one. Uh, since we are working with uh, a servlet version which is above 3.1, so if I go to properties, I don't know where it will be mentioned. Uh, I think it will be in... Uh, oh, where it will be? Let's search. So somewhere it will mention that we are using a servlet version which is more, which is more than 3.1. Uh, one, I don't know where it is. It should be somewhere. Uh, is it run? No. Okay. Oh, that's weird. But we have mentioned somewhere that we are working with a servlet version which is uh, more than more than three, which is three point. In fact, I, I guess I'm uh, I'm working with three point one. So whenever you're working with a servlet version which is about uh, three, you can use something called as annotation configuration. Now, how to specify that you are using annotation here? Uh, first, we'll replace this file here, which is Telisco hyphen server XML. Now, how to replace this file? First, we have to create a class to, to replace this. 
we'll say right click class and we'll name this class as we can name it anything we want uh, but here we'll mention it as um, Telisco config okay we can give any name so we'll, we'll say Telisco config we will on finish now as soon as you create this class you have to make this class as a configuration class so in order to make this as a configuration class since this is a configuration file right we are mentioning all the configuration here uh, we need to make this class as configuration to do that we have to use an annotation called as at uh, configuration okay because this is a configuration uh, the next thing we have to mention here is uh, what uh, we need to mention that we need to scan the components so we can do that with the help of at uh, component scan right and in bracket we can specify the uh, package in which you have this so you can we can mention multiple packages that's why it allows you to put an array so that we can put multiple packages so we'll say com dot uh, what's the package name it is telisco right so we have the package name as com dot telisco so let's say you have one more package in which you have a component so you can just give a comma here and you can add one more component there and that's it it's so simple right so this is what we have done in this xml file so now if you even if you remove this file it will work okay we'll do that once we start we have, once we have done all the configuration we'll remove all the, those two files we'll try to run this so once we have done for this dispatches of it configuration let's replace this xml uh, thing so to remove web.xml uh, we can use uh, we can create a class specifically if you are working with a solid version which is more than three so we can create a class and we'll name this class as my web initializer you can name it anything you want okay but you need to make sure that you are extending a class which is called as uh, abstract I don't know it will be here so it will be abstract annotation configuration dispatcher servlet initializer uh, I know this is a very big name right so this is a class name uh, you need to extend this class to achieve that feature and uh, again uh, it is only present in spring framework okay so for that you need to extend all the spring framework files so click on uh, finish it will give you this class which is my web initializer and you need to extend this class which is abstract annotation configuration dispatches of it initializer i know it's a very big name right so let's ignore that part so what we need to do here is we'll ignore these two things uh, should we ignore those two things okay we can do that uh, we need to we need to set this mapping first so for see in XML file we are setting the mapping right so for all the requests so here also we need to mention that uh, how can you mention you can since you are doing a, uh, a string of array we'll create a string of array here by setting some values since we have only one request type so we'll give slash so for all the requests we have to call a dispatcher servlet and how to mention that so we need to mention this file name right so we need to mention the risk configuration here and to do that we need to use a method which is not root we need to mention it here so let me remove this and instead of this null we need to return since we have to return a class array right so we'll say this is class array so we can specify a class array in which we, we can mention multiple classes so we'll say this is my class name is configuration telisco config dot class right which is that simple so by doing we are by creating these two files which is there is a config and my web initializer what we are doing is we we don't want to we do we should not uh, it's not compulsory to use web.xml and these two files so what we can at least we'll remove this we'll say delete okay and uh, one more thing let's not remove xml let's remove this this uh, this stuff here uh, since we are not mentioning that part so it will not get activated your map my web my web initializer will work here uh, let's try since we are changing lots of stuff let's restart the server once uh, that's my tomcat so i'm restarting the server now so what we have done here is we have removed the xml configuration and now we are using annotation based configuration so this is for dispatcher servlet and this is for xml web.xml file so i guess my server is started You're done it's done let's run this file uh, it's index.jsp and you can see it's here let me enter those two values uh, 4 and 7 submit and we got the answer we got the answer without without any xml file and that's the power of 
annotation based configuration sounds good right uh, we can do one more thing here as uh, which we have not covered in the XML uh, XML configurations. See, uh, I'm calling this display.js page, right, which is here. So we are calling this page, which is display.jsp, in which you are mentioning the extension, right? So what happens when we work with Spring MVC is, uh, we should not mention the extension name here. The thing is, in future, you may want to change to a different view technology. So now you're working with JSP, maybe in future you want to work with free mark or you want to work with velocity so you don't want to mention the extension here so even if you are changing from JSP to JSF uh, you just have to mention display here somewhere you have to men mention that you are working with .jsf or .jsp uh, how can you do that is in your web initializer so in, in your Telesco configuration we can mention a method here uh, we can mention that public uh, we need to create an object of internal view resolver. So internal view resolver or internal resource view resolver is responsible to search for the view name. So as a as a controller, you will just mention I want to call display. What display? Maybe JSP. Maybe dot JSF. Doesn't matter. We want a J. We want a page with the, with the name display. So it is our responsibility to mention the uh, mention the extension. The second thing is, let's say this display page is not inside web app it is inside web inf so we are trying to hide that file so we are making this file as private so no one can access that file directly now right so for that we need to uh, create a method which will return internal so that's internal resource view resolver okay and we can give any method name that's okay we can say this is view resolver and here we'll try to return the object of internal view resolver first we have to create that object here so we'll say internal view resolver internal resource view resolver we'll name this as vr equal to new internal resource view resolver once we got this object we'll say return vr okay but before returning we have to specify two things the path where you have your jc files and second stuff we have to mention the extension so how to specify that? So you have to say vr dot set prefix. So to set the path, we have to specify the prefix. So we'll say it is inside a web inf folder, web hyphen inf. Okay, and the extension. So we have to say uh, you you guessed it right. So we have to use suffix, and that should be dot jsp. So let's say in future, if you want to change it to dot jsf, you just need to come to your configuration, just make it dot jsf. It will work. Okay, uh, not exactly .jsf, you have to make it .xhtml, right? That, that's how your JSF, work, JSF works. Now, since we are following annotations, uh, we need to specify that this will give you an object of internal view resolver. For that, we need to use one more annotation, which is add bean. So if you're not clear what is add bean annotation, you can just check my Spring Core annotation video. Uh, I will try to make the link in the description area. So you make sure you, you watch that video if you want to know about how add bin annotation works okay uh, so now we are not mentioning the extension so you are just mentioning display okay let me just make it display one just just for the experiment and let me run this file let's see what happens it should give you an error because we don't have any file name called display one.jsp that that's what we are expecting right so let me say 23 and 5 submit so you can say we got the error so you're searching for a file which is display one.jsp and see in which folder it is web inf right so where we have mentioned that we have mentioned that thing here so search in the folder which is web inf with the extension .jsp we are not mentioning any path any extension here okay just to make it work we'll say display okay let's go back refresh the page is it refreshing yes refresh done submit and you got the output Simple. So that's how we can achieve uh, Spring MVC with the help of annotation configuration. Okay. There are some some more annotations. So what you can do is uh, we can do some more some more stuff here. Uh, yeah, that will that will see in the next video. So that's it from this video. In the next video, we'll talk about some more annotations in Spring MVC. So that's it. Thanks for watching and do subscribe for more videos.